lock it in. We're going to be uh, looking this time at the bongos. Now, for me, the bongos are a, a really underused instrument outside of the, the traditional uh, idioms. It's a brilliant instrument to, to take on to a session or to, to add into the mix with, um, with any recording project or live project. It's super easy to get around and transport. It cuts through any music. It's so high pitched and such a great, great sounding instrument that I'd highly recommend you look into, uh, in, look into the, the bongos as, as an instrument to, to add into the mix. To be honest, even adding it as, a, as another tone within the, the drum set is a cool thing. I remember Benny Greb used to have, uh, on the left, he used to have a couple of, uh, a couple of bongos and, and a few different percussion instruments, which was all he used it amazingly musically, really cool. And that was even with sticks, which which can sound sound pretty good. Now, traditionally, you, we find pairs of drums like this all over the world. You know, from India to Azerbaijan to the Middle East, obviously Latin America, uh, everywhere you find pairs of drums. Um, they're all they're many many different names. The pair of drums that we're most um, you know used to seeing are these uh, traditional uh, Afro-Cuban uh, Afro-Cuban bongos. Now, as I say, it's an absolutely fantastic uh, instrument. For me, it, it, great as a solo voice, but also really cool as a, as a percussive, you know, building block and, and as a something to bed into a mix of uh, stuff that you're that you're putting down now you know it's a very simple construct of drum you know you can see through the centuries you know how this would have been developed with a simple you know shell and a and a skin um, now traditionally now these drums are you can see they're uh, single single headed drums these uh, are the the remo skins where you can get you know different uh, uh, natural skins which also sound uh, pretty cool in fact in, in Cuba they often used um, x-ray film for uh, for bongo heads which also sounded sounded absolutely absolutely great um, so the heads are held on by this two uh, two uh, rings of metal and the tuning bolts and, and tuning tensioning rods so it's a very simple uh, construct of of, uh, of drum they're tuned very very high so there's a lot of when you first tune them up there's a lot of tension that you would put on with the i mean i tend to use a an adjustable spanner but you can use any sort of spanner there's a lot of tension that's put on the drums when you tune them up and uh, you often you'll often hear them uh, you know hear the skins popping and people sometimes get a little bit scared about uh, you know that they're going to damage the drums because they they hear these sounds but it's not going to damage the drums you've just got to tune them up really high one of the important things is that if it's natural heads then you know you need to tune them down by quite a bit if you're not playing them because depending on the humidity and the weather um that the heads can can you know split open if you haven't tuned them down so and also even with the with the uh you know the remo heads if you if you don't tune them down sometimes it can you know pull the shell out of shape a little bit or it's just a lot of tension on the drum perpetually uh, personally i never tune them down with the with the uh the remo heads they the heads stay you know nicely in tune and uh, i i've never had any problems but you know you might feel that you don't want to take that risk and that's uh, that's absolutely cool so a brilliant pair of drums um, let's look at the uh, playing position so the bongos are held between the legs in this manner. Now it's it can be sometimes it's you've got to think about where the where the tension bolts uh, are, are the rods are, are coming. So you know if you can slot that rod there in the crease of your crease of your knee, then then that's kind of cool. So this slightly uh, angle like this is is possible. One of the things that I do with some drums is is loosen them off and and turn the chassis. Around so that so the tension uh, bolts fall in different places, and so that kind of makes it you know sometimes a little bit more uh, more comfortable. Um, it takes a little while to get used to holding the drums um, in this manner, uh, particularly if you're playing for a long period of time. Um, there's a lot of tension on the legs, and and so you know you have to slowly get get used to that and not hold them too tight. 
is is, a, is an important uh, important thing. You start to you know trap uh, you know your circulation or stop your circulation a little bit, and that's that's not uh, not not a great idea. Now, alternatively, um, you can get the stands, and there's different ways that you can play them. So if you're not playing them as a standalone instrument like this then um, you know you can have them on a stand in a percussion setup with congas and timbales or you know batar drums or whatever you want to put together. Um, now as we said in previous articles this is really the kind of uh, basic toolbox sort of approach to uh, you know getting started with percussion having some some basics so we can ha add this sound into into our arsenal when we when we go into uh, into the studio and uh, have some extra tones and sounds to play um, with with whoever we're we're working with it's always advantageous to to the more you've got then basically the more likely you are to get called back uh, on on gigs and sessions and and different things so percussion programming maybe if you play a little bit of piano it all adds to what you can offer uh, a band so obviously it's two drums if we were to get deep into the uh, you know the traditional style, uh, Cuban, Afro-Cuban uh, style of uh, of bongo playing. Then there's a lot of muting with different, uh, you know, with the thumb and the fingers. We're going to get look at a little bit of that in the next one. Um, but to begin with, we're just going to look at the basic uh, open tones on the drums and uh, and and accents. So obviously we've got we've got two drums. Both drums uh, are struck slightly differently with the hands um, to get the tone um, that's that's required. So the the high bongo. Now, first, just first of all, hear how high highly tuned it is. So it's really really tuned high. So don't be scared to to crank it up with the with the spanner and, and make it uh, nice and uh, nice and highly tuned. So um, the basic uh, the basic stroke on the on the small bongo is played near the rim we call this the open tone so this is with the the single finger or more traditionally you'd play with the uh, with the full fingers of the hand or i prefer with the one finger For a lot of the staccato work that I do, you know, you've also, you know, bear in mind, it's what I want to achieve. That's what I want to achieve with something. As an individual, you know, we've all got different, uh, different ways of approaching music and and making, you know, music on instruments and on drums. So different ways to approach the instrument is valuable um, for each individual in different ways. So you've got to remember to try and develop your own character, your own personality and your own voice with all of these things. It's not just what is, is presented to you in the, in the lessons or the uh, you know, video material that, that, you might, that you might see. So we're going to start with the basic 16th notes um, on, on the high bongo, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And we're going to just pop um, a few accents in and uh, it's going to sound a little bit like this is example one notice how the touch strokes in between the accented notes are really quite quiet With the one finger or with the full fingers. So now let's just add a bass note into that, a bass tone on the on the uh, larger drum. Now this is played. You notice that with the with the strokes on this drum, we, we're like right back near the edge. With the uh, with the larger bongo, we we come in a little bit uh, and. The bass, the, the optimum bass tone is played with the hand into the drum uh, slightly. Notice how much lower tuned this drum is. I'm playing with the full hand. Let me move the hand back a bit and you hear how the tone, how the bass goes out of the tone.
So this portion of the hand, the underside of the hand, hits the rim, hits the, the, rim, of the, the rim of the drum. Again, with this stroke, you can also play that with the one finger. Not many traditional players would play with a one-fingered uh, one finger approach. Yeah, you know how much more full-bodied the, the full hand is. So, let's look at the next example. Now we're just going to add one bass tone into the groove um, that we had uh, before. Example two. One, two, three, four, and... This is with the one finger. Or with the full fingers. Now let's change that up a bit and just put a couple of, uh, of different uh, accents in there. Example three. So for example four, we're going to add a couple of extra notes on the, on the bass, on the larger bongo for the bass tone. So the beginning of the second bar, we're going to have a, a couple of extra uh, bass tones. For example five, we're going to play um, a groove that's that's very very common across percussion and uh, drum sets, kind of like a, 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 a samba feel. One of the things about playing this is that because we're leaning with the right, we're still right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, as we see in the, the notation. Um, we have a, 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 a silent note as the right hand comes over to the larger, larger drum. So, because the lilt that we want with the groove is... And so that means that when we're coming over to play on the larger bongo, we have a kind of ghost note also with the, on the larger bongo. So notice how the strokes with both hands are quite even. So the accents are kind of the same, uh, the same volume and the same attack and the the open tones on the on the larger bongo are also quite equal. And then the high drum also the notes are very uh, evenly balanced. Very important that one hand isn't louder than the other otherwise a lot of the uh, Patterns and, and uh, phrases won't make uh, any sense uh, at all. So we're still making great headway, still only using right, left, right, left, right, left as a as a, a, a hand pattern or, or sticking pattern or uh, you know way of constructing the rhythms. So it's, it's often overlooked how useful such a simple uh, you know figure can be. People always want to move on to complex different stickings and different hand patterns and stuff like that. But, you know, if you look at the masters play, you see how much they do with the real simple elements of their instrument, you know, whether it's drum set or percussion or whatever, you know. So it's really important that you uh, kind of focus in detail on, on those, uh, the simpler elements, it's particularly when you're, you know, starting to get uh, get the instrument instrument together. So we're just going to look at a couple of other uh, brief examples, looking at different different accents. Um, 
most of the time, or very often with bongos, um, you're going to hear the bass tone on the up rather than on the uh, on the downbeat. But of course, you know we're working outside of any uh, traditional idiom really, and so you know you can kind of put any structures you like together. If we go back to something we did earlier in the series uh, with the cajon, the simple three-three-two uh, combination, it's. Uh, it's quite useful to see how we can begin to employ that on bongos or whatever else we uh, we choose to look at. So we're going to start with the with the downbeat um, on the on the larger drum, and um, we we'll just have a couple of accents on the smaller drum. And remember, the groove is one two three one two three one two one two three one two three one two one two three one two three one two one two three one two three one two. Or we can try slightly different, uh, slightly different accents. We could have uh, two, three, three. This is one of the great things about um, if you start to look at the little components that you find in different, uh, different rhythms. You can rearrange them and, and juggle them in, in any which way, um, in any which way you like. So one, two, one, two, three, one, two. Three. So lots of ways you can start to put uh, different things together. Work out whether you, you know, like the full hand. Or the one fingered. Approach to playing the instrument. Make it your own. And, um, and I, I hope to see you soon for the next issue.